Okay, okay friends. friends. Um, long time no see. <laughs> I wanted to record the video today um, after watching this anime, which you see on the screen. Uh, it's called in English Machia, when the promised flower blooms. I watched it yesterday, yesterday night. I was actually sitting like until 2 o'clock past midnight. Um, very interesting one. Very beautiful one, actually. The, uh, the, uh, from the image point of view, from the point of view of drawing, design, it's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I'll show you maybe bits of pieces of it. Um, but the main insight which I got about it was... Uh, I was actually thinking about it, you know, the whole night and I woke in the morning with this idea that, oh, you know, I realized something very important about Japanese culture. So, uh, I'll try to explain to you how I think it may be connected to the maid culture as well, in which uh, Nico Kabata operates. I will watch some of her much in that time. I, I just choose randomly the day of maid, but uh, there is also a funny moment about it. I'll talk about this later, what, what's so funny about it. Uh, that will be about Akane speaking it wrong. Yeah, probably you know that part, where she did it, a uh, wonderful translation by T. Shinji, of course. So, okay, uh, I'll try to explain real quick what I understood about it. So, uh, you remember that Miku, when she does uh, Imagine I Time and actually the whole uh, greeting from Bandmate, it sounds like uh, in English she says, actually her English uh, goes like, welcome back home, masters and princess. So that's what she says. She says, she says yeah, welcome back home, thing. <laughs> so I was always like, what could that mean? Welcome back home? I mean, why back? I mean, strange. But after watching this anime, I understood what terms they actually use. So, when a Japanese person comes home, like say, uh, after some absence or whatever, like after work or something, they say, Tadaima, which means I'm home. And the people in the home say, Okari nasai. So she translated herself as welcome back home, but that's a concept, a cultural concept, which, uh, of course, we, we should not say it's not familiar to Westerners. Of course, it's familiar to Westerners, a concept of a person returning home. But we don't have special rights about it, like a special greeting, which will be like a welcoming ceremony or something. And for Japanese, it seems it's like a ceremony. So a person comes and uh, says, Tadaima, I'm back home. And somebody in the home should welcome him, her. And for in this anime, that was a very important thing. Uh, it's all about um, the short uh, plot goes like uh, this uh, girl. Uh, there is a race of uh, low living people, so they live like hundreds of years or something. They're not immortal, they just live longer, like uh, as far as I understood from the plot, like 400 years, I mean, 800 years, whatever. And they don't change, so they always look the same as they were when they became adults. So, of course, children, they are smaller, they look like children, but when they come of age, they don't get older, so they don't uh, get like wrinkled skin, you know, they don't lose strength. So that's their feature. And they don't mix with normal people, with the short-lived creatures. Uh, for the psychological reasons. Uh, there is a very strong message actually in this anime, which is like, 
what I really like about Japanese culture, they're very philosophical. So the whole idea of that anime is about people uh, being greedy, you know. They want to get some uh, valuables, whatever these valuables are, like uh, riches or long life or beauty or power or whatever. So there are different creatures actually there. They call them legendary creatures. So besides this um, Yorfu, Yorf, yeah, they call it Yorf, this um, race, this long living race, which looks like people. <clears throat> they can actually have uh, common children with normal people, with their short-lived ones. But there are also like dragons or something like that. And these dragons, they are enslaved by the people. And people use them like um, airplanes, uh, military airplanes. And these dragons, they are not really intelligent, it seems. But nevertheless, they suffer really a lot in this captivity. And so sometimes they get this, what is called red eye sickness or something. So when they basically like go mad and they like burn from inside and they just uh, uh, explode, something like that. So, because they, yeah, it's difficult for them as, you know, creatures who can fly, you know, and being just used by the people, being kept in captivity. And that's the whole idea of that anime, is that if somebody restricts your freedom, if they try to use you as a tool, that's a problem, right? It sounds stupid, I understand, and of course, most people understand it, but uh, in reality, people don't think about it so much. Uh, of course, we all know this idea of freedom, you know, the whole Western civilization is built around this idea of freedom, but people don't understand what this freedom is for. And the freedom is for self-development, because we have free will. God has given us free will, and nobody has the right to limit it. So if somebody decides for you, that's wrong. So you cannot really uh, do anything good if you deprive people of free will. That, uh, of course, from the point of view, like why do totalitarian regimes even appear? Because there are some order loving people. Ordnung must Muss sein, yes, uh, was the German motto. Uh, it is German motto still. I, I remember I read this phrase and I told it to my German boss and he was like, hey, hey. So Germans are known for that. And uh, Hitler was probably also just order loving person. He thought, oh, I can make a happy society if I just order everything. You know, all the bad people will be eliminated. Uh, of course, he had some crazy ideas of who the bad people are, but whatever. Uh, but these totalitarian ideas, they, they are not successful because you decide what other people should do. So the whole idea of existence of the society, which is discussed really, that's the subject of this anime. I really recommend to watch it with this idea in mind, you know, because it's like, it's very heavy anime as well, a lot of crying, you know, a lot of suffering and stuff very beautiful at the same time. Uh, so the whole idea of the anime is that you, you can't really make people, not even people, even dragons, whoever they are, you can't make them do what you want from the point of like politics or like, oh, let's have a prospering society, let's have a prospering uh, state. And for the sake of this prosperity, we can oppress people who don't understand, you know, they're stupid, so they don't understand what's the best for society, so let's make them do what is best for society. 
And that goes, uh, runs absolutely counter to God's idea of free will. No, the purpose of existence of people in this world is to develop themselves so that at the moment of death, their soul will be powerful enough to pass into the other world and be an angel, you know, and as an angel will help people here, all the stuff, you know it, right? We know it very well, all this idea of saints, you know, and uh, it's very well known um, concept from the teachings of Jesus, Muhammad, Baha'u'llah, all the messengers of God. So, uh, the goal of existence is not to have order in this society, you know, uh, whatever the price, as many people think. They say, oh, the, the society is so badly organized. Let's organize it well. You know, let's uh, have some totalitarian regime which will uh, make everything right. No, no, no. That will lead to disaster in there because that's not the goal. So, now, Back to the subject of the maids. So, why Japanese culture is really like my favorite? They uh, really do a lot of things right. I don't idealize them. I don't fetishize them. Kai Gaijin guys. Who was the guy um, who was fetishizing uh, Japanese girls? So, so I don't, don't fetishize Japanese culture. I understand as any nation in this world, of course, they have positive uh, aspects and negative aspects as well. So very high level of suicides, for instance, just um, saying a certain thing about it. But what they have, they, they, they have a lot of things, right? Uh, the very appearance of the bands, like bandmate, is a sufficient proof of that. So, why? Okay, Miku Kobato. Miku Kobato. As the creator and uh, inspiration and philosopher behind Batmate. Why did she even conceive this idea of mates as an um, entertainment entity, right? Because she liked the idea of mates. So what is the philosophy of mates? Mates are servants, right? They serve society. They serve the people who come to the restaurant, to the cafe. And that's the right attitude. So if you want something done right in this world you have to approach it from the point of view of service so we exist here for the service to the society not for domination not for ordering people not for ruling with an iron hand or whatever uh, we will all die in the end right that's inevitable that's actually one of the also that the whole subject of the discussion of this anime makia these uh, hours, they are lonely, and so they see their dear ones dying before them, like you see on that picture. So that was um, a boy, a little boy, just a newborn baby, uh, and she found him. His mother was killed by robbers or something, and she adopted him. So she said, I'll be your mother. And of course, he knew that she's not his mother. He's not your mother. And at a certain point, he like rebelled against it and said, you're not my mother anymore. And that was very difficult for her. And she didn't want her elders of her race, of her clan, whatever you call it, tribe, they advise her never to love anyone. Don't love anyone, they say. Because you'll be suffering in the end. Because you will leave, you will keep leaving, and they will die early. And you'll be alone again. 
the the conclusion which comes in the end is it's better to <laughs> live the life and suffer in the end than not to love anyone and still be alone so you're alone in the beginning you're alone in the end because people you loved died before you but at least you had this experience and that's the the important realization she comes to so in the end she she sees the the boy dying at like very old age uh, she comes to his uh, death uh, bed and just uh, he says like Makia, nice to see you or something like that. Ah, they actually exchanged that. That was what I was thinking about. Uh, that um, Yeah, she comes to his deathbed and she says, Tadaima, I'm back home. And he says, Okari, welcome back home. That, that's like the, the whole idea, you know, of, of that. So that's what that's what Miku Kobato promotes. So we come to Bandmate concert as we come home. And she says, Okari, Okari Nasaima Sen, Kuchujin Sama Ojo Sama. So welcome home. So we are supposed to feel at home there. We come to their concert, but we come as to their home. It's not like a a regular small home. You don't have usually servants in your home normally, right? Servants, where do servants exist? Where do these maids appear? They appear in big homes, right? In like palaces or something. So, uh, Miku thinks in terms of the world. So the world is like this huge house where all different people live. And maids are serving in this house. So they, uh, when they say world domination, it's a domination of servants. So they serve the society. They don't dominate it, although it's Sekai Seifku, yeah, world domination. But in, uh, in Japanese, it has connotation more like a conquering the world. Uh, so they translate world domination because it sounds more funny. But in fact, it's not like a domination which Hitler imagined, you know, with, the, with his uh, Third Reich or whoever of the totalitarian uh, guys imagined, like having an empire where the ruler rules with the iron sword. You know? No, maids rule. Uh, they don't rule even. There is no even idea of ruling the world, right? They serve in the world. So we come to this world and we welcomed by them, by the maids. So they are our servants. They serve us. There is even difficulty in translation. Uh, I, I was not able to find any Russian word to translate this akuji. Yeah. And even in English, it at least Google has a huge problem translating it and also I think uh, Tishinji also couldn't find uh, a right word, I think, because it's not translatable for some strange reason. So what is that Akuji Service? Uh, when we say service, I don't know, it reminds me of like church service or something. I come to a service. Okay, there will be some devotionals and the prayers will be read and that's the service. No. In Japanese culture, that's you come to a cafe and you served by the maids. But that's that's a very like mind blowing idea for me. I don't know. So, uh, okay, let's just watch something <laughs> because I, it's a homage night time. So I actually recommend you very much this uh, website, video pilau.jp. Uh, there's a lot of videos on it and it's not censored i think so you can have you can even find a, a lot of bandmate stuff there so i sincerely recommend okay let's see i think it should work it works uh, as i as i read the under, um, the description of this website you see it's downloading things so it actually works like a collaboration or something so you see this one says one peer so i can 
okay it downloads the video but then if somebody else watching it at the same time so it will upload the video so i will share it from my site and the speed of download will be faster but it works very well actually even even with one peer <laughs> okay so what i want to show you uh with this translation so it's homogenai time yeah magic spell time so miku speaks about um okay let's start from this uh 3605 so we somewhere there okay omaimaspo sa sare dewa sara sara itsu mana okarinasaimase mitai no yatsu o yaritai to omaimasu ga okarinasaimasen here she said okarinasaimasen so she said well now we'd like to uh, to do the welcome back home thing as usual but so she says there will be a special guest and that will be Akane. Okay, let me rewind it a little bit. Maido no hi. If you don't know the day of Maid, Maido no hi. So she says it's the day of mate today the day of mate um the day of mate the day of mate this one may 10 so may do so 10 is do uh to to may do may do no he no is like um possessive case he is day so mate day mate day There will be a special guest. Uh, it will not be by Kabata, there will be a special guest. Omakase kudasai. She says, what does she say? Omaka, please leave it to me. <laughs> Omakase kudasai. Masaka, <laughs> I never imagined I would do this someday, she says. Now I'll say the maid's words. Ah, I'm too nervous. <laughs> so she said Irashaimasen. Uh that's actually welcome. Also welcome. But you see even in when Tishinji translates it he tries to like welcome to our show it's not so yeah he actually uh, he even gives a reference what's the reference of it let me see i even didn't watch <laughs> sounds that you just want to and then sounds in japan sorry 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 there should be ah uh, moving on to the things that you usually only hear in Japan, why not start with one of the most well known the word for welcome to our shop? Irashaimasen. Well, it's not shop, the shop is not there. Irashaimasen. It's actually just welcome. Um, <laughs> like when you walk into the store. But yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, if you go into a shop, that's what you hear. Irashaimasen. Uh, and so Akana makes this mistake, but it's a different one. So. You should not say Irashaimasen. You should say Okarinasaimasen. <laughs> いらっしゃいませ、ご主人様。いらっしゃいませじゃないですっぽ。お帰りなさいませですっぽ。普通の、普通のメイドのテイさんになっちゃうっぽ。働くなよ、カフェで。働いちゃダメっぽ、ラー
<laughs> you are not in the cafe. And Miko says, you're not in the ramen shop. <laughs> yes, I is like, don't, you don't work in a cafe, Kabata. Uh, don't work like that, Paul. Uh, that was like a ramen shop, yes. Yeah, so no, you're not in the ramen shop. Yeah, of course. This is like, what should I say? What should I say? Okay, <laughs> not So, I hope now you understand more why all this. Um... <laughs> Welcome back home, masters and princess. It's band made. Let's enjoy it and let them conquer the world and have the world where we serve each other and don't try to dominate each other. Peace and love.